Hello, my testing friends out there. My name is Ilari Hendrik Egerter, and I'm the CFH of House of Test. CFH stands for Cyborg Friendly Humanist. A cyborg friendly humanist acknowledges that software encapsulates both the technical and the social world. Or, in other words, it basically includes almost everything. I'd like to offer you a three point plan to become an excellent software tester. And I want you to be successful, because the more skilled testers there are out there, the better for our profession. And also, the better for me, because I might be able to hire you. I have been in testing since 2004, and I've spent the last 12 years making people successful as a manager of testers. That means I've been profoundly thinking about the elements that are necessary for somebody to make a difference. Here are the three elements that I regard as essential to becoming a world-class tester. The first one is the most important, and number two and three are supporting activities for the first point. Number one, develop a holistic model of testing that includes technical skills. Number two, build your network inside and outside of your company. And number three, teach what you know to others. Let's start with the first and most important point. Develop a holistic model of testing that includes technical skills. It is not sufficient to know how you operate the specific tools or having a certificate or anything of that sort. You need to be able to put them into context of the task at hand. If you don't understand the discipline of testing, you're just operating a useless machine. Understanding that testing both involves the confirmation or refutation of explicit expectations about the functioning of your software. Yes, much is written down in the form of specifications and requirements. Still, by definition, in an open system, which most software is, you cannot have a complete set of descriptions of every single behavior your software is doing. That means you need to understand that much of software can only be discovered through elaborate experimental design. The better your experiment, the more information you will gather about your software. And you have all been there. You do something and oh, what a surprise. You discover ele elements that surprise you. And I don't specifically like the division of testing into manual and automated. Humanity is filled with binary drawer systems in the hope of making sense of things. That doesn't mean it is helpful. Testing is an activity you do with your head. Your hands are not a crucial factor in all that. As a skilled tester, you know how to apply tools in your daily work. It is not helpful dividing your holistic approach into manual versus automated. So think about that a little bit uh, further. A better way of understanding testing is to evaluate the degree of tool use and being clear about the purpose of your actions. Are you trying to confirm or refute the known unknowns? Or are you trying to reveal new information about your product? The unknown unknowns. I highly recommend looking into Dave Snowden's Kinefin model. We will not be uh, going into that model because it will take too long. But I'm confident you know how to operate the search engine of your choice to find the richness of information about it. In terms of te technical skills, I believe it is <clears throat> essentially helpful to have software development skills in order to be a good tester. That does not mean you need to be the best developer, because that is not your job, but it helps you to build better models of the product you're testing. I think the minimum level you need to aim for is to at least have interactional expertise in software development, to have a meaningful technical discussion with a developer. If you want to look uh, further into interactional expertise, then read the works of Harry Collins. If your development skills are more than that, then it's even better. Now to the second point. Build your network inside and outside of your company. In my experience, a vast majority of testers never leave the narrow environment of their company. Or if it is a larger company, there is not much contact with other teams within your company. I have never understood why that is the case. And also I think it's uh, wrong. If you build meaningful relationships with fellow testers everywhere, then that allows you to expand your knowledge rapidly. It also allows you to tap into the broader knowledge of people within the community if you're faced with a technical problem and you don't uh, see a solution for it. Just ask around, get to know people, talk with them about testing. It's a wonderful world out there and it is so easy to get in contact with other people. Much of network building can be done at no or low cost. Go to local meetups, sign up for webinars or organize your own gatherings. The possibilities are endless. And my last advice, teach what you know to others. 
If you put yourself into the mindset of a teacher, then that forces you to reflect and study a topic much more in depth than you would otherwise. There is a beautiful effect of preparing a presentation or a workshop on a topic which helps you to understand what you're doing much better. Also, if you're really not understanding a subject, it might be just a good idea to try to make a presentation out of it. Uh, only just going through this process will help you in understanding what you're doing. And because people usually ask questions, that opens the door to even more and more in-depth study of the subject. There's no better way to accelerate your testing skills than teaching them to others. Of course, all of the above involves a lot of hard work. Go do it. Start today. Reach out and become amazing. Thanks and cheerio. Also, feel free to contact me anytime if you want to discuss something further. I'm happy to talk to you. Stay healthy and all the best, folks.